credible role in the Second World War. Yeah, but first to a man who would have the enemy shaking in their boots before they even saw him. His weapon of choice? The bagpipes. This is the story of Churchill and his unique contribution to World War II. But it's not the Churchill you're thinking of. Known for his motto, any officer who goes into action without his sword is improperly dressed, Jack Churchill was a British army officer who became renowned for going into battle with Nazis armed with a longbow, bagpipes and a Scottish claymore sword, which earned him the name Mad Jack. As 98-year-old Eric Buckmaster confirms, he was a legend in his own time. He was your colonel, I understand. Yes, he was a good man to serve under, a very positive leader. He had a reputation for always leading from the front, but he was a st stern disciplinarian. The military activities being undertaken by commanders. One outstanding figure is Major Churchill, the Mad Major, they call him, who piped the men over and again played his pipes in the heat of battle. He played the bagpipes in battle? Yes, invariably to um, encourage the men. The tune I played was, Will Ye you Know Come Back Again, on troops. We dotted about in different places. But once I played the pipes, they would know that I was there, and I hoped they'd converge on me. Even under gunfire in one battle, he continued to play. He was playing his bagpipes. Under the gunfire, uh, he suddenly was overwhelmed and, and um, his bagpipes ceased and, of course, they were able to take him prisoner and he was paraded in chains through Berlin. How would you rate Mad Jack Churchill amongst them? The best, really the best. But it's for his famous longbow that Mad Jack will be most remembered, which today is too fragile to be used but is owned by collector and archery instructor Carol Pierce. Carol, what on earth have we got here? Jack Churchill's bow that he took to the Second World War. So what on earth was Jack doing with it in the first place? He was just a good archer. There's a brilliant photograph of him coming up the landings and he's brandishing a claymore and he has this bow in a pack on his back. The bow itself has been made in three pieces and called a carriage bow. The carriage bow is a bow that you can take apart. So the longest piece you've got is that. That's reasonable to carry in a backpack or something, exactly, isn't it? Yeah. So these were the arrows. He's painted them matte black so that they can't be seen in a war situation. And this is the original leather bow bag, and that's okay. the end with Jack's own writing on, where it was repaired in 1938. Right. So what was he like? One man who will know is Jack's son, Rodney Churchill. He was an adventurer. He was the first person to drive across India on a motorbike. He got into surfing. He was the first person to ride the seven boar, um, the last person to kill an enemy with a bow and arrow. At home, he liked short hair, he liked clean shoes. And he was quite precise in that way. I remember coming home in my first pair of flared velvet trousers. <laughs> he was appalled. <laughs> and he tried to teach us archery, and of course, we were pretty useless at it, which frustrated him. So when you were growing up, I mean, did he talk much about his wartime experiences? He did some extraordinary things. He escaped from concentration camp three times, captured twice again and got home. He was quite seriously decorated. He was actually recommended for a VC. These are his medals. That is the DSO and that's the bars. That's the military cross. Mad Jack died in 1996 at the age of 89. Going into folklore, maybe not as the most famous Churchill, but certainly the most infamous. Which leaves me with one last question. When you think of the two Churchills, Jack and Winston, do you think they'd have got on? I don't think they ever met. They were probably both fairly bloody-minded in their determination. Once they decided to do something, they would do it. And my father wanted Britain to win the war, and he was going to do his bit, which of course he did. Oh, thanks, Ruth. Uh, and uh, Christian, you were just watching that there. It's a story that you...